I want to welcome you all into service this morning. It is a beautiful day outside. Uh, it's an even beautifuler day uh, when we get to spend it worshiping in the house of the Lord. So welcome into service. We are very, very glad you're joining us this morning. Uh, I'm Russell. I'm the youth director here, but we are very, very thankful that you are with us this morning. And I say that because you'll notice one familiar face that is not in service with us this morning. Uh, Brother Justin is not here. He and his family are on a much deserved vacation. So they're getting a little bit of time off to spend together as a family. So we're excited to be able to still provide a service uh, with Brother Justin getting some time with his family. So Miss Lori, she's up there. She's going to be bringing the sermon this morning. Uh, so it's going to be a great service. We have blessing of the backpacks. We have a full slate full of great things. Third grade Bibles this morning. So uh, it is going to be a great service uh, to be a part of. Whether you're here in person or online, we're just very thankful that you're joining us. Uh, if you're visiting with us, uh, the closest restrooms to you are through this door to my right, your left, and then straight down the hall. Hallway. Uh, and ladies is just around the corner on the right. But uh, those are the quickest restrooms to get to if you're visiting with us and need those. Uh, it is going to be a, a great service, so stick in here as long as you can. A uh, couple of announcements to go through real quick. The first one is I want to encourage you all that if you're on Facebook, to, this will be the only time I encourage you to be on your phone during service unless you're one of the stream people helping out. But take your phone out, open up your Facebook app, and check in here at Salem. That way people know that you're here worshiping with us. It's just an easy way to get our church name out into the community uh, and just let people know, hey, we're here, and we'd love if you want to come worship with us. I know Randy's pretty good about checking in about stuff. I know Rachel is. And I see Jenna all the time, and uh, I know lots of y'all do it already, but just a reminder that if you have one of those smartphone things, those pocket computers, you can push your Facebook app and check in right there. Um, let's see what else we have. There is, oh yeah, the youth are going skating today. So from 1.30 until 5, our teens are going to be roller skating. I will be there with them. Uh, so if you see me next week in a cast somewhere, don't be surprised. Um, Rachel will be there to also make sure that I am safe and the teens are safe. She's a roller skating pro. I am not. So uh, it'll be a good time. Watch social media. I'm sure we'll get some videos of myself falling lots of times. So it'll be a good laugh for you. Maybe we'll win some money on America's Funniest Home Videos. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, there is a Women in Faith meeting tomorrow. They're meeting in the fellowship hall at 1230 for a potluck. So if you're going to bring a dish, they ask that you get here just a little bit early so they make sure they have time to set everything up on the table where it needs to go. But uh, a meal at 1230 uh, with a potluck for the women in faith, and they'll have their meeting after that. Uh, but I'll be in the fellowship hall again tomorrow, potluck starting at 1230. And then the last announcement I have is that today at 2 p.m. inside this very room, there's going to be a camp association meeting. Uh, that's kind of where they talk about how camp meeting went this year. They kind of look at plans for next year, things that might want to change up or keep the same, things that went well. Uh, and so that'll happen today at two. It is open for everyone to come uh, be a part of. So you are cordially invited by our camp association president, Miss Laura Cross, uh, and the rest of the camp association to come check out uh, the camp meeting and give feedback about how everything went this year and maybe something you want to see next year and things like that. So again, today at two in the sanctuary. Are there any other announcements that need to get made at this time before we get our service started? Going once, going twice. All right, let's pray, y'all. Father God, we come to you today just so full of joy and excitement for the many things that we have going on in our lives. Lord, it is an exciting but an anxious time too with back to school. So I pray that we are really able to set aside all those distractions, just still our hearts and still our minds and allow us to focus solely on you in this time we have, because we know that is the point of worship, is to worship the one true risen Savior. Lord, this morning I pray that uh, you would send your spirit to fall on us and fill us up wherever we are. Just allow us to really show your love to everyone we meet because we cannot do anything else because we are so full of your love for us. Lord, I just ask that you hear our praise and you hear our prayers and they're pleasing to you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you all please stand and join us in majesty? Thank <clears throat> you.
kiddos y'all coming up it is children's time miss jenna is going to be sharing with you all this morning i invite y'all to come down if you're joining us at home i encourage you to scoot just a little closer to the tv but come on kiddos right yay look at all of us up here so exciting all right so i have a very important question to ask are we ready for school yes. okay so it's kind of mixed yes no Corey, are you ready for school? Yeah, are you sleepy? Yeah, yeah me too. That eight o'clock is gonna be real early to have to function. Anyways, okay, so I have a question. Have we ever heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones? Do y'all remember the rest of it? But, but words cannot hurt, but I have a question. Do y'all agree with that? No. no, words can hurt, can't they? They can kind of make you feel bad. They can make you sad. They can make you, what else? Mad. Mad. We get that a lot at our house, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want you guys to look at something. I'm going to try something. It is toothpaste. All right. So I want to see. Let me see. I should have opened all this. It may have a safety seal on there, and it does. See if I can get it off. Okay. So we said that words can hurt, right? Okay. Here we go. Are you all ready? I'm going to take all of this toothpaste out of this tube, and I want you guys to think about how I can put it all back in the tube. Okay? Y'all start thinking. Oh, here we go. Am 
not wanting all come out, is it? I think that's all of it? Let's see. My mama taught me this trick. So you don't waste any of it. Yeah. All right. All right. Y'all tell me. How do I put this back in there? Oh, yeah. I put all this toothpaste back in this tube. Oh, here. Let me, let me do this. I'll open it back up. All right. Now we got room. Now how do I do it? I could add water to it. You were really too smart for me. <laughs> if y'all didn't hear that, she said put all the toothpaste in the Ziploc bag and then cut off the tip and squeeze it back in there. <laughs> I need you to come to my house sometimes. Can you do that? You can't really put it back. But you really can't put it back in there, can you? Like, just like it was, right? I can't really do that, can I? No. So what I want you guys to go and think about, because some of us are starting school tomorrow, and some of us are starting school a week from tomorrow. Words are like that. Once they come out of your mouth, you can't take it back, can you? Mm -mm. So I want you guys to go and think about this. You guys might be the only Bible that some of your friends ever know. Okay? And they're going to be watching each and every single one of you to see how you act. Because you guys are going to be a little bit different because you have Jesus with you. Okay? So I want you guys to go this school year and watch the words that you say. Whether it's to your friends, your teachers, somebody on the playground that you're not having a great day with. And okay, this one's going to be really hard. Even your brothers and sisters. I know, it's hard. I know. I had a brother. I totally understand. But I want you guys to think about that. Once it comes out of your mouth, or once it comes out of this tube, we really can't put it back in there, can we? And we don't want to harm people, do we? All right? So can you guys think about that before you say something? I know it's going to be really hard sometimes. You're going to be really mad and you want to say something. Just take a deep breath and say, Jesus, I'm going to need you to help me. Okay? All right, y'all ready to pray? Dear Jesus, I am so thankful for each and every one of these boys and girls, and I ask that you be with them, you go with them as they start their new school year, and that you bless them, and that you keep us all safe, and we come back next week. Amen. Morning, everybody. Um, this morning is a special morning. Um, I am Lori Canada, the children's director. This morning, um, and we have the honor to be able to recognize um, kids that are moving up into the third grade. And by doing that, we present them with a Bible from the Salem United Methodist Church. And so we have two special children that are moving up this year. And so I would like for Barrett Jones and Carson Smith to come on up. And we're going to present you your third grade Bibles. Here you go, Carson. Here's yours. Here, stand right here. We're going to get that. Miss Rachel's going to get us a picture. Barrett, here's yours. All right. I'm going to try to on. Ready? All right, let's say a quick little prayer over these kids as they get ready to start their third grade year. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for these children. We just ask that you bless over them and that they might be able to show your love throughout their year this year and that they might be able to be lights of your path throughout their, at their schools. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good job, guys. Amen. What a joy it is to share uh, third grade Bibles with two more kiddos from Salem. So congratulations, Barrett, and congratulations, where'd she go? I lost her. Oh, Carson. I was like, uh, 
sorry, I lost her. <laughs> uh, I tried to follow him. But uh, congratulations. We're excited for you all and excited to see what God is going to continue to do in your lives now with your very own third grade Bible to read through. So uh, that is awesome. Uh, but keeping along that whole joys aspect, uh, I do want to mention some birthdays and anniversaries we have this week. Uh, the anniversaries that will be celebrated are Mr. Larry and Miss Roxy Wurtenberger. Uh, so happy anniversary, you love birds. Uh, birthdays, we have Brody Jones and Reese Robbins this week, so happy birthday. Uh, I always encourage y'all to write cards and text message, Facebook posts, anything like that just to stay connected and to uh, celebrate the special day with these people. Uh, so continue to do that. The specific dates are in your bulletin if you need those. So uh, check that out. Uh, carry this with you each week so you know exactly what day they fall on if you want to do that. Um, all right, so what other joys are we celebrating today? What other joys do we have? Yes, ma'am. Garrett teams last year college at Batesville, and Ryan's in the 10th grade now. All right. So is Garrett officially moved in for last year? Yeah, he's uh, in his last year there at Lyon. That is awesome. All right. So celebrating some back to school. Uh, anyone else celebrating back to school? You can raise your hand if you're celebrating back to school. No one, no one is celebrating back to school. Some of the parents are like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> a little peace and quiet, I can handle that. Uh, so, yeah, so back to school is coming up. What else? Anybody? Any other joys I want to share? Any other joys? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. So that is a huge joy. The huge joy. That is wonderful. Uh, anybody else have any joys? Jenna? Right. Big shout out for Brother Charles out there doing uh, do the Lord's work. He's out there cleaning and sweeping sidewalks uh, every morning. Uh, so thank you to Brother Charles for doing that. Miss Julie, got another one? Yeah, my little great grandbaby will be three years old on Tuesday. All right, a birthday. Uh, a birthday. All right. Uh, what else we got? What other joys? I'll keep waiting for joys, y'all. Joys are worth celebrating. So I'll keep waiting. I have a joy that I just got my microphone situated finally so it wasn't falling off my head. So that's a good joy. What else? What other joys do we have? Y'all, don't be stingy with them. Don't be stingy. Randall. The Bethel class had a wonderful movie night last night. And if you missed it, you missed out. All right. So uh, thank you to the Bethel class for hosting that. Glad y'all had a good time. Uh, if you missed out, I'm sorry. I had to miss out, so I'm sorry I couldn't be there. But uh, I'm glad y'all had a good time. Uh, what else? What other joys do we have? Yes, sir. Our cousins had a awesome. Good chance to catch up with everybody, right? Very they cool. All still like each other. They all still like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, big praise for behaving, but I'm glad y'all still like each other and still get along at all the reunions. That is awesome. That is awesome. All right, what else we have? Any other joys? New faces. A couple new faces? Yeah. So Brother Stan just shook his head. <laughs> but uh, I believe Ms. Marion already said it. It's just make a joyful noise, right? That's right. That's right. Lord doesn't care if it's on key as long as it's noise. He'll take it. And it's <laughs> joyful. Absolutely, absolutely. Ms. Denise, you have one? Volleyball season starts Tuesday. Volleyball season starts Tuesday. So if you have a volleyball kiddos, it gets kind of busy during that time, but it's always fun to watch your kiddos do their extracurriculars, a chance to kind of see them really enjoy themselves. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Uh, Kathy Nickel. Um, we have a daughter that's coming home, uh, let's see, Wednesday, and she will be here through the weekend for a gathering of sorority sisters from Batesville, uh, from Lyon College, and uh, uh, for their 50th birthday. And, and they're all meeting at your house, is that correct? No, 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 no. <laughs> too, many, too many women that are coming from all over. So uh, I'm just glad that she's coming to visit them. We get to have her at our house for night. That is wonderful. So a praise, Ms. Kathy has a praise for some family visiting. Ms. Kathy Turpin, you have something?
<laughs> Good. That's a praise right there. So uh, Miss Kathy lifts up Anna in praise that she's finally getting settled down in New Orleans and uh, really enjoying her time down there and got her first paycheck. So yay. Uh, that is a big deal. All right. What else? Any other joys before we move to concerns? Any other joys? Miss Penny? Denman and Dolly here. Yes, Brother Denman and Miss Dolly. Thank you for joining us this morning. Glad you're here. What else we got? Anybody else? All right, let's go. Let's move to concerns. Are there any concerns you want to share with the church body? Any concerns you want to share? Okay, so we'll lift up Brother Larry with his first appointment at car tie. Lift that up. Uh, one, one other thing to add in there, uh, LJ Marlette. Uh, has had some lower back problems, sciatica, I think, so he's kind of struggling with that this morning. So if you'll throw up an extra praise for him, uh, throw up an extra prayer that he'll get to feeling better, that maybe he can come skating with the youth. We'll make him sit down, though. He'll, he'll be the photographer. He can't skate. But uh, so, LJ, if you're watching, prayers for you, brother. Uh, any other concerns you want to throw out there? Any other concerns? We have one online. Got one from online. Okay, so prayers for Sharon Runyon's sister-in-law, Sally, uh, was in a pretty serious car accident and is recovering for, for some wounds from that car accident. My understanding is they were able to walk away from it, but are in some pain and had some, some cuts and stuff like that. Uh, so prayers for them. Ms. Deb, you have one? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so a prayer for Brother Stan, Brother Stanley Grimmett, um, just new medicine that's making his thyroid kind of strange, so we'll be in prayers for him. Allie, you have one? Okay, so we'll pray for your grandma that's at home and not doing too good. We'll be praying for her. Any other concerns you want to lift up? Any other concerns? Yes, ma'am. For mom, she's having some issues. We're, we have an appointment not yet scheduled, but we continue to try to figure out what's wrong. And Carolyn Hoggard is going through some miserable time right now with sciatica. So we need her, need prayers for her too. Okay, so for Betty Bragg, yes. and then also for Carolyn Hoggard as well. Yes. Okay, so two to, two to add in there. So Betty Bragg and Miss Carolyn Hoggard, add those to your prayer list, please. Anyone else? Any other concerns you want to want to lift up? Going once, going twice. All right, well, let's take some time uh, just for silent prayer and meditation, and then we'll come together and pray uh, as, as a corporate prayer. So let's pray uh, just silently to ourselves. Lord God, as we come together today in one large prayer, as one body of Christ, there are many things that we have to be joyful about. We have family visiting. We have all type of things going on in our lives that you continue to bless us with. But Lord, at the same time that so many good things are going on, there's also things in this world that give us concerns, things that weigh heavy on our hearts and our spirits. Lord, I pray this morning that you would uh, continue to bless us as you have with all the joys in our lives, but also uh, continue to work closely with us to wrap your arms around us, uh, to comfort us for healing uh, and for anything we may need in our time of concern and our time of need, because we know that through Christ, all things are possible. So as we continue to lift up the prayers for those that are sick and need healing, as we continue to lift up the joys for those that are visiting from out of town, uh, I just pray most importantly that you continue to bless our church as a whole, as one body of Christ, that you would bless each and every one of us uh, in some manner that we are unexpected, that, that is unexpected this week. Lord, I just pray that uh, you keep your hand over us as we uh, go out uh, into our world and throughout the week. Just uh, allow us to feel comforted um, each and every day. Uh, together, we join together and say the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, Shuzi, if you want to make your way down. Let's say one more quick prayer over our offering. Lord God, we know that all good things come from you. And so it is with a joyful heart that we uh, return a portion of these gifts back to you. And Lord, this morning I pray that as we return that portion that you would bless the gift, that you would bless the giver, and you would allow this church to use it in a means to reach as many people on this planet to show your love to them. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Would you all please stand and join us in the doxology? Amen and amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Luke, as we have been reading through. Uh, it'll come from Luke chapter 12, and this time it'll be verses 49 through 56. I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me, and I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to be to bring peace to the earth? No, I have come to divide people against each other. From now on, families will be split apart, three in favor of me and two against, or two in favor and three against. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Then Jesus returned to the crowd and said, When you see clouds beginning to form in the west, you say, Here comes a shower, and you are right. When the south wind blows, you say, Today will be a scorcher, and it is. You fools, you know how to interpret the weather signs of the earth and sky, but you don't know how to interpret the present times. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. What about that scripture, right? Matt, I think Brother Justin knew what the liturgical calendar was going to be and said, Hey, Lori, why don't you preach on that one this Sunday? <sighs> I'm going to do my best. We started out talking about fire. Fire can be pretty destructive, can it? We hear about the wildfires of California and Colorado and how they have just massive destructions through acres and acres, losing homes, losing crops, losing forests. I found this on the web. Oh, I'm glad you found it on the web. Um, but through that, through the destruction, there can be a cleansing and reviving that happens through that fire. I went to school at Monticello. I don't know how many of you know about the school at Monticello. I know I have several people that went there with me. And that is a, a, a pretty big school in the state that deals with forestry. And part of the things that they learn there at the school is how to do a control burn. Now, why would foresters want to burn their trees? That doesn't make sense, right? For regrowth. Because if you have a control burn, you can get rid of some of the extra leaves that are down on the, on the ground. You can get rid of maybe fungi or other pests, pests that might be in the area that doesn't need it to survive. Even though fire can consume a lot of things, there are some things that are pretty resilient to fire. Just like in this picture here, you can tell that the tree and the barks have been scorched by flames. But there is that regrowth that is happening. Fires are good in a controlled sense. There's been years and years that even in the prairies and even where we live now and where I grew up over in the Delta, that regular fires were part of the regrowth that needed to happen for sustainability. Without those thick treetops blocking the sun, that regrowth can happen. In the first part of this scripture, Jesus talks to his disciples about a fire on this earth. And many, many of the scripture we can interpret different ways. And this one I'd like for us to look at as a cleansing fire. 
This is a fire of regrowth, a, a cleansing fire that we can clean. Today, we just as fires, I remember growing up in the Delta, I lived in the middle of rice fields, a.k.a. mosquito country, right? Um, and I remember playing outside, and it would just be raining ash. And it would be from the farmers that were burning their fields in preparation for next year's season. It was a fire of preparation, a cleansing fire of preparation for our next season. And we need to prepare for our next season with God. This cleansing fire will help us to let go of things that we might have been holding on to. At camp meeting, uh, Reverend Susan talked about how we had that extra baggage we carried on, right? Maybe this cleansing fire will allow us to be able to let go of some of that baggage and let our faith carry that weight. I don't think it's a coincidence that immediately after talking about fire, Jesus turns around and talks about baptism. A lot of times whenever you hear it about opposites, you talk about fire and water, right? And so there is something that is welcoming in that water. And just as fire can be cleansing, water is just as equally cleansing. If you, get, if you can ask any, any cleaner out here, I'm not going to be stereotypical with genders here, but if you ask any person that does any cleaning, a rag and some water can do a lot of good right? They can do a lot of good. Back in the time of Jesus, when he was saying these things, he talked about baptism, and baptism as a rebirth and a regrowth and a cleansing of your soul was a little bit different um, than what it was in the past. Water was still used as um, a response of cleansing. They used it realist uh, ritualistically, um, and it was a symbol of purification. The water of showcasing, uh, to showcase the cleansing power of baptism with Jesus was something that was different. Do you think everybody enjoyed or uh, agreed with what Jesus did while he was here on earth? No, they sure didn't. They ended up persecuting him for it, right? He healed the sick. He welcomed those that were shunned. Do you think everybody likes what he was doing? Not necessarily. So baptizing in the Holy Spirit was a new concept. So that particular verse was talking about the baptism. I want a different translation. It says that I have come to change everything and turn everything right side up. The idea of baptizing in the Holy Spirit was new. It was a change. It was something that was different. Many of us, we are in a state of change. We talk about changing. We are changing into a new school year, right? I've changed in a role here. It's something that I haven't been used to lately, right? Some of us might be changing classrooms. We might have moved, changed jobs, right? We might have a different family structure than what we had used, been used to planning, right? There's change that's happening around us all of the time. And believe me, change is hard. Change is hard. Ten years ago, I was um, in a transition of change. Uh, ten years ago, I was preparing to walk into a classroom in Star City, Arkansas to teach geometry. I don't know if y'all know that about me. I used to be a teacher. Um, and I taught, I was getting ready for that year, thinking it was going to be just fine and dandy. I was in, had, had some really tough couple of years, but something changed that year. By the end of that year, I was planning to move to the big city. Now, I, I don't know if those of you that have lived in the central Arkansas for a majority of your life, but if you live in a small town where you graduate with 26 people, and I could probably name all 26 of them still, 
going to Little Rock was the big city. Scary, right? Going to Little Rock was a big city. But God had bigger plans for me. If I had not made that move, I would not have been able to have climbed Pinnacle with some of my best friends, including Reuben. I would not have been able to take teenagers to Silver Dollar City and experience the love of God with them and us. I would not have been able to find soul sisters that know me better than myself. Change is hard, but it's good. Best of yet, if I would not have changed, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have the family that I have. When I first read this scripture, I thought, Lord, do you really want me talking about this? And the more I prayed, the more I thought, the more it weighed on my heart. We all have struggles that we overcome. We all have change, and it's hard, and we don't like it. We don't. But we can overcome those struggles and that fire, and we can all have that change with the baptism, and we can be better for it in the end. And in in thinking about that, I thought about the phoenix. The phoenix is a beautiful bird that comes out of the ashes of the fire. Fire can affect us and it can cleanse us. And on the other side of it, we can become a beautiful phoenix that thrives and moves forward and helps others. It is a symbol of good luck, of balance, of passion. And we can be stronger and uh, stronger soldiers for Christ. Let go of that baggage. Let go of the extra things so that God can teach us. But how can we as Christians have that fire burning so we can stay focused on what's important? We need to keep that fire going. So I got to thinking about that and came up with a couple of things that come to my mind almost immediately. And one of them is worship. Worship. And it can come in various ways. We can sit here. We're worshiping in here. We can worship online. Some people I know worship on a deer stand. Right? Find your place of worship. Lately, my favorite place to worship has been in the car. This summer, my kids' favorite song is, Our God is an Awesome God. Mama, 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 Our God. I want to sing Our God. Let me tell you, hearing a two-year-old and a seven-year-old singing Our God is an Awesome God in a car, it echoes, it'll send you chill bups, and you'll be crying just like me. I promise you. If you don't, then come ride in the car with me for a couple of days. Part of our worship is to be with others. Just as a fire and a spark can hop from tree to tree, the spark inside of us can hop to person to person. Right? Our sparks and our fires can help feed other people. And just like that, we might need a little spark ourselves, right? I get my spark from a little Olivia K that says, Mama, I want to sing. Right? We can't be scared to show that spark. Raise those hands up. Praise the Lord, right? We are full of love and hope that God is with us. Oh, and how does that go? How does it go? Holy Spirit, activate, activate, activate. Holy Spirit, activate, activate, right? 
That's part of it, right? Get that Holy Spirit to activate in us. We want that activation and whoever to see us, around us, to be a part of us so we can lift up in praise. Secondly is prayer. So we have worship, we have prayer. We need to be in the habit of praying on a regular basis. Not just to lift our worries up to him because he can carry them a whole lot better than us. But we need to be able to provide those nutrients that we can grow the right stuff. Listen, prayer is a two-way street. Conversation with God, it's a two-way street. To be able to listen, what is God trying to tell you? Pray for those around us. Not just what we want or what we need or what we think should happen, but let God's will be done. There are many different prayers that incorporate different prayers of how to pray, like the five-finger prayers, right? Where you might pray for leadership or um, the service people, things like that. You just go search online. There's lots of them. But lifting up others to help feed our soul. And lastly is that we put Bible study into action. We must continuously read and reflect on what God is trying to tell us. This book has so much knowledge and so much information. We'll never know all of the things that we need to know about it. But one thing we can do is learn from it and put it into action. Not just passively sitting on my pew saying, hmm, I wish this would have happened. Right? Let's get up. Let's be active in our faith. Let's fit the role that fits best. Find the role that fits best for you. And let's do the mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That is our mission, to make disciples. We cannot do that from our seats. We can't do that if we're just focusing on complaints and negativity. We've got to move together and change and be part of the phoenix that rises from the ashes. There's a lot happening in this world. There's no doubt, behind, doubt of that. But even through these verses, Jesus talks about division. It talks about having different opinions. But we can come through the fire as a phoenix. Jesus wants us to be ready for when he returns on earth. He wants us to cleanse our hearts of sinful nature and be ready so we can be that phoenix. Again and again, we may cleanse with fire, but I'm prayerful that we can grow and nurture those important seedlings that come up through the ashes. So I hope that you step with me and step with Salem as we work together to be that phoenix from the fire. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for being with you this morning. We just ask that you just be with us as we walk through our cleansing fire and that we might be a spark for those around us. We just ask that you um, help us to be able to listen, that we might be able to worship you, pray with you, and that we might be able to study your word to put into action. We ask all these in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so this morning is a very special morning. This morning is Backpack Blessings. If you haven't noticed, there is a few backpacks up here. I'm going to ask a partner, Russell, up here as well. We'll do it. We'll get it done. He's looking at me like, what am I doing? We did talk about this ahead of time. Um, but since we are together as a children's director and youth director, um, we're working together 
um, to bless these backpacks this morning. Um, and so as a combined effort, I'm going to start out by blessing the backpacks of the faculty and the staff that we have here. Dear Lord, we just ask that we bless over these teachers, bless over the staff and the support staff that, that throughout this season. We ask that you just be with them this school year, that they might be able to be seen, that they have the safety and the protection, and that they might be able to have the wisdom to guide and protect our students in this upcoming year. We ask that you just be with them and that they might have their hands and they might be able to be of service to you in the best way possible. In Jesus' name. Now he's going to do the students, but he doesn't have a mic, so he's going to go lectern. I'm going to step up here so y'all can hear me. Uh, so uh, I want you all to join me in prayer, but not just today. I want you to pray all year long. Every time you wake up and you think about school, stop and say this is a quick prayer uh, for the students and for the teachers and the staff. So if you'll join me in prayer, I'm going to pray over our students. So let's pray, y'all. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, number one, just full of thanks for the kiddos that you put into our lives, for the students that are going to walk out of our house and into that school building. Uh, I pray that you would send just a spirit of comfort and excitement and confidence in those students as so they walk into that classroom for the first time, ready and eager to learn, to be educated, and to take that knowledge into the world. Lord, I pray that you would keep them safe this year as they're in their schools. Allow them to feel safe and allow them to know that the teachers and the staff in that building are going to do everything they can to make sure that safety is number one on everyone's minds. But Lord, most importantly, I pray that you send your spirit to those schools to fill up the classrooms, fill up the hallways, the cafeterias, the restrooms, PE rooms, anywhere these students go. Just send your spirits so they know that they are not alone in any situation they may encounter. And I pray that they face every situation with the confidence of Christ. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand and join us in our final song, Unfailing Love.
Amen and amen. Thank you again for joining us for service this morning. Uh, it is always just a joy and an honor whenever we gather together with our church family to, to raise the name of the Lord in praise. Uh, just a quick uh, note, in the back are some extra keychains that uh, Brother Randall uh, engraved. Um, and they're just in the back, right at the back of the sanctuary for a love offering. Uh, they're a little wooden, kind of little token piece on a keychain. They are beautiful. Uh, check it out. And if you want one, grab one and then drop a little love offering in the, the jar that's back there. But those are back there for you to enjoy if you would like to. Um, but just to kind of send you off, uh, just remember that fire only needs two things to burn. One is oxygen, which is readily available. And the other is fuel. That's it. Two things, oxygen and fuel. The tricky part gets into how you get that fire to spread, and that's where wind comes in. Lots of times in the Bible, uh, the Holy Spirit is represented with wind. So I want you to think about that, that as you feel the wind or as you think about wind or spreading your fire to others, think about using the Holy Spirit to help you with that. And I want to encourage you, as Lori said, let your spark for Christ jump from one to the other to the other and let that fire spread and burn as a church. So that way it is our mission to go out and make disciples just by simply showing Christ's love to everyone we meet. But go and have a great week. And kiddos and teachers, happy back to school week for some of you. For some of you, it's next week. But uh, have a great week, you all. And go share Christ's love with somebody. Amen.